Hi guys, this is Philip from Reamt, and today I'm going to show you how to build the Cyberpunk 2077 Thermal Katana. I won't go into too much detail for this modeling session, since the katana is pretty straightforward. As reference, I used one that I found in the game, which basically has the same overall shape as the thermal katana, since the weapon itself is not playable in the game as of yet. But this one works just fine, to see all the details for modeling. I then sketched out the main features of the blade and the hilt by hand, and transferred the sketch to 3ds Max, and started remodeling the katana by using splines. Since the object is quite simple, we can do that for almost all parts. Draw splines, extrude and adjust a bit. Once I had that, I extruded the set splines or used the bevel modifier as shown in some of my other videos. Then I took care of all the small details. Even though there aren't many, they still take a bit of time to model. But with a good reference, that is not an issue. To create a proper 3D printable file, I then used Boolean operations to combine all the parts into one, which I then sliced again into objects with the proper size for my printer. After using the Boolean operations, it's always necessary to check if there aren't any open edges that might result in problems for slicing the model for the 3D printer. But overall, the biggest challenge was to figure out a way that would allow this model to be stable once printed. Since it would be made entirely out of PLA, it'll probably be very wobbly and unstable. So I decided to add a groove in the blade that allows a metal rod to be embedded in the 3D printed part. On top of that, I sliced the model in a way that the separate parts of each half would interlock and overlap each other. That should give it some more strength as well. In general it's not perfect, but this entire model is basically just a prototype. I would like to mill the entire thermal katana from aluminum at one point. And that's going to be awesome when I get to do that. But once modeling is done, it is time for printing, assembly and electronics. For the electronics, I used an ESP8266 D1 Mini. By the way, you can find all the materials I used in the video description. A WS2812B LED strip with addressable LEDs, a switch and some wires. The layout is quite easy. I use the D2 pin of the ESP as the signal source for the LED strip and only connected the ground directly to the D1 Mini. The LED strip will get its power supply directly from the batteries in order to not overload the 5V pin. Also, I use the 5V pin to power the D1 directly with the batteries. For my katana, I used three AAA batteries as a power source, even though I had to squeeze them into the hilt. Now that I figured out my layout, I quickly cobbled together a sketch for the startup sequence in Arduino. For the Arduino sketch, it is important to note that you need to have the proper libraries and board installed. I will cover that topic in a very short separate video. Check out the link on top. The startup sequence is basically just used once in the setup. It randomly fluctuates the separate LEDs to simulate a kind of electrical wearing of coils heating up the blade. For the continuously looped function, I added a slight flickering that also simulates heating up the blade. Once I uploaded the sketch to the board, it was time for testing. I usually use a separate board and test strip before putting together the final components. You can get those boards very cheap anyway, so it works out like that. And once I saw that the sketch and the microcontroller and my layout worked, it was time for assembly. which was actually quite easy. I just had to glue all the parts together and as said earlier added a metal 8mm thread that I had at hand for stability where I had modeled the groove. That made the blade quite sturdy. 
However, before I glued all the parts together, I first had to implement the electronics. I still changed the orientation of the microcontroller and for that had to cut out some areas of the printed model by hand. The reason for this was to be able to connect the microcontroller to the PC even after it was glued in place. As soon as the electronic components were fit in the model, I glued everything up and started to sand the 3D prints. Then, again, I used putty to smooth out all the print lines, also as seen in some of my other videos. In between, I also used some filler spray before sanding again. That's always a back and forth, but it will give you a nice smooth result in the end. And once that was done, I just gave the entire katana a black base coat. After letting the paint dry for a day, I started masking the hilt to give only the blade a metallic dark grey coating. By the way, be careful to use some proper masking tape. There are some that will either leave some residue after peeling them off again, and some that stick too much and might peel off the paint altogether. Also take your time with this step, since it will decide if your paint job works good or if you have to work over the entire thing again. Once I had the next paint coat finished and the coat had dried, it was time for the satisfying part. Peeling off the masking tape. That's always a nice feeling seeing the finished paint job. Finally, I had to work on the blade itself. I ordered a sheet of red acrylic glass, which I then laser cut into the right shape. For this step I also uploaded 3D printable files if you don't have access to a laser cutter. You can use a transparent red filament to get the same effect or a similar effect. So once the laser cutting was done. For my blade, I just had to sand the acrylic glass into an angle that would approximate the blade. And to fit the LED strip, I used the Dremel to mill a groove on the top side. To finally fit the blade to the rest of the katana, I still had to make some small adjustments to where the 3D printed parts meet the acrylic. But once that was done, I glued everything together. And then I finally had the finished thermal katana in front of me. Turning it on for the first time. Um, and yeah, then I played through the game and found out the katana is red. All the inspiration images that I found showed it black and metallic grey though. Oh well, then I have another variant coming soon. But overall, I am really happy with how it turned out. And it's going to make a nice image on my prop wall. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to build your own cyberpunk katana, then you will find all the 3D files as well as the parts list and the code for turning on and off the blade in the video description down below. In the next coming weeks, we will probably have more cyberpunk related content. Not necessarily directly from the game, also our own inspired designs with all the 3D files for you to download and make by yourself. If you enjoyed, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell and stay tuned for our next video. Until then, bye!